2. Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. Of the doctrine of baptism, of laying on of hands, of resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. A few audios ago, we looked at Romans chapter 6, verse 16. It says, Do you not know that whom you present yourself slaves to obey, you are the one slaves whom you obey, rather of sin leading to death, that's the flesh, or of obedience leading to righteousness, that is the spirit. How we live our lives will determine where we would go. Those that live their lives in the flesh will die, and those that live their lives in the spirit will live. Faith in Christ leads us to eternal life. So today, I I want to talk about when we have eternal life. So from Hebrews, let us go into another New Testament letter, 1 John. 1 John chapter 5, verses 10 and 12, or 10 through 12. John writes, He who believes in the Son of God has the witness in himself. So what witness is John talking about? Well, let us hold it right here and let us bounce back to another New Testament letter. And that is Paul's. Romans chapter 8, verse 16. Romans chapter 8, verse 16 says this. The Spirit, referring to the Holy Spirit, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit. Our spirit was regenerated by the Holy Spirit when we believe Jesus in our heart, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if you look at verse 17, it says, And if children, then hears, hears of God, and joint hears for Christ, if indeed we suffer with them, with him, that we may also be glorified. So the witness that John is referring to is to the Holy Spirit. And so Paul explains that the witness, the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So to get there, we have to believe in the Son of God. He who does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed the testimony that God has sent his given son. Because he has not believed the testimony that God has given of his son. I got excited and Got a little tongue twist right there, but don't worry. The tongue is unraveled, and we are continuing onward when we have eternal life. And in this, the testimony that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. Again, the New Testament letters are written to believers. 1 John was written to believers. You know, we've seen people that try to put doubt in God's children. They try to get them to doubt their salvation. So John reminds them that those who believe in God has the witness. Therefore, they have eternal life. Those that don't have the witness did not believe in God, and therefore, they don't have eternal life. Remember, Romans chapter 10, verse 13, Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord can be saved. If you believe in your heart and confess your mouth that Jesus is the Lord, you can be saved. You can receive the witness to have your spirit regenerated, Therefore, you have eternal life. Now, the whole conversation of what must I do to get in the kingdom of heaven took place in John chapter 3. And throughout the rest of this audio, I believe 
that is where we will be. And I'll go ahead and wrap it up again. Romans chapter 10 verses 9 through 13. In John chapter 3, Nicodemus, a great teacher, visit Jesus in the night. And the first thing that Jesus said to him, or one of the first few things, Jesus in answer said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So Jesus is telling Nicodemus on how he can get into God's kingdom. Nicodemus in that time was trained in Jewish teaching and Jewish thought. He believed everything up to the Old Testament. He knew that the Messiah was to come and that he was going to save all people. Yet still, he was caught up in his culture. He thought by obeying the law that it would get him to the kingdom of heaven. So Jesus is telling him exactly on how he could get into the kingdom of heaven. After Jesus tells him that he must be born again, Nicodemus responds to him in verse 4. How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? You see, when Jesus told him that he must be born again, he was still caught into the physical sense. He thought as an old man that he would need to go into his mother's room for a second time to be born again. So Jesus explains more what it means to be born again. And this helps us to understand what it means to be born again. Jesus answered, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Now, I used to think that the water was referred to like the physical part and maybe into the baptism, but it refers to the spirit. Remember, in the gospel, Jesus says when someone is born again with the spirit, out of their stomachs will have an abundance of living water. And then the spirit from there, once we receive the spirit, regenerates our spirit so we become born again when we receive the spirit by believing in jesus and the spirit regenerates our spirit back to life that's what it is to be born again again i want to remind us on how we could be born again what do you need to do to be born again very simple. Go back to Romans. In Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 13, 9 through 13, it's very clear. Even though this New Testament letter was written to born again Christians, this reminded them on how they were saved. It's a reminder because even Christians in Rome probably had to deal with doubters. They had to deal with someone else who had another thought on how they can be saved. So this is a testimony of Jesus. It says right here that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, only by the Spirit, and believe in your heart that God had raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Believe in your hearts and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, Whoever believes on him, Jesus, will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord over all is to reach to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved show you a cool passage from Romans and this is a bonus to show that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord can be saved let's see it's in Romans chapter 3 let's see let's see if I could find it right up here maybe it's in Romans chapter 2 let's see let me find it really quickly I got just about under a minute. I think I could get to it. Uh, 
Let's see. Uh, let's see. Romans. I know it's in Romans somewhere. I need a little, little bonus right here. Okay, here we go. Let's see. Anyways, what I'm trying to show, and maybe I'll show it when I do find it, is that with God, there is no partiality. He doesn't put other groups above others, even though, yes, Israel is a chosen nation of God. Not because of Israel, the nation itself, but because of Abraham, the father of the Israelites. He was considered a friend of God because of his faith. And so... God shows no partiality, and whoever calls upon the name of the Lord can be saved. 